All right. Well, we have a lot lined up for you today, and I am so excited to be with you all. Um, it is the bottom of the hour and we'll get started. I'm going to make sure that you all have the presentation and all the resources that we're going to be providing for you today. But again, thank you for being here. I'm Jeanette Simonson from Thrively. We're going to be talking about building a positive learning identity, and that starts right there with you and some of the things that you're doing to set up your classrooms. Many of you guys may have started already, but as you know, here at Thrively, our saying from the very beginning has been every child has a genius and they deserve to thrive. And so that's everything we do. We put our heart and soul into making sure that we can give you the resources that you need to do that. Uh, so without further ado, I'd like to get in and uh, introduce myself. I'm Jeanette Simonson, happy to be with you again. Every two weeks, we roll out a new um, topic conversation. Um, we really focus on strengths at the beginning of the year. And there's a reason for that is that when we lead with strengths, not only does confidence um, increase, but we start to think about how we teach people who bring to us all these strengths. And you know, think about what you know about the students who are coming uh, to your classrooms, uh, whether they've already come or they're starting to come. And I wanna do a little exercise just to start us off. And uh, thank you for everyone being here. I'd love to hear where you're from, um, what you teach, all of the things that make um, you an educator. But the one thing, the question on the board here is how would you teach a student with these strengths? And so I'm introducing myself as Jeanette Simonson Gorolnik, and these are my top five strengths based on the Thrively Strength Assessment that I took. So worldly, creative thinking, coordination, verbal, and athleticism. You're gonna have students who come to you this year with some of these strengths. And you might think, how am I going to teach a student who has this combination or has one of these top five strengths? You might look at the word verbal and say, okay, what do I need to do for this child? Coordination and athleticism. We probably know students who are coming to us who need um, some of those. So please share in the chat, how would you teach a student with these five strengths? And of course, as always, I'd love for you to connect with us uh, at JR Gorolnik or LinkedIn. We definitely send out a lot of um, resources throughout the year. So thanks for sharing that. Um, so as we get into thinking about this question that I posed in the beginning, we want to ground ourselves in why we're going to adjust our teaching. Um, really, it comes down to a Gallup uh, student poll that came out in 2013 that talks about students are 30 times more engaged when their school is committed to building on their strengths. And I don't know about you guys, um, I taught through the pandemic, I've been teaching, teaching for you know, almost 20 years now and engagement has always been the thing, right? How do we engage students in the content? And it really isn't about engaging them in the content, it's about engaging them in the learning environment. And who we are as teachers really helps to create that. And so when a teacher makes them excited for their future and helps them to understand that their strengths are gonna guide them toward their future, to a successful future, then they're going to commit to whatever content you're teaching them. So uh, thank you, good to see somebody from Paducah, Kentucky. Thanks for being here. Um, keep bringing it in, tell us where you're from and how you might teach a student with uh, some of those strengths, worldly creative thinking, uh, coordination, verbal and uh, athleticism. But as we jump in, um, we also wanna think about Thrively's whole goal here. When students are known for their strengths, and are given time for their interests. And I want you to kind of pause there for a second because we, former math teacher here, content, I gotta get through the content. But at the beginning of the year, I know that we give time to learning about our students. And so give them time for their interests. They might feel a sense of belonging and trust with their teacher when you do that. Um, yeah, we're, we're sharing students learn well with games when they make it personal and fun, right? Set the stage early. There used to be a book called the first, uh, I think it was the first 30 days, first 20 days of school. I had that on my shelf every year I pulled it. And I thought, what are some new things that I can pull out that will help them realize that this is going to be a trusted space for them, a space where they're going to explore their interests. And then I'm going to listen to them, right? So welcome, Annette. So good to see you, Thomas. Uh, we've got somebody from, uh, from California, a couple of people from California. Thanks for sharing. Um, but Thrively tries to create the conditions for positive and growth-oriented student engagement. So with strengths, well-being, and hope, and we'll, we'll talk in um, following webinars about well-being and hope a little bit deeper. So today, we want to ground ourselves in a couple of inquiry questions here. 
how can we build relationships built on strengths and interests? You're already doing that actually. And that's a rhetorical question, but there's more resources coming to you today that get you thinking about what can be created so that it's new and exciting for you too. How can we develop trust and belonging? What happens when we give students a voice? Again, going back to that engagement and building a positive learning identity. How am I as a learner? What resources exist to manage stress and overcome challenges? Because as learners, we're gonna have that happen. But we also wanna access those joyful lessons and projects. And then what creates relevance for students' futures? So as we look at these questions, we're gonna roll out each one of these kind of in tandem. And uh, again, great to see people from all over uh, South Dakota, Minnesota, Michigan. Welcome Pueblo, Colorado. You're right from my neck of the woods. Awesome. I am coming to you from Denver. All right, so here's some work for you all. Look at these strengths. And some of you may have taken the strengths assessment. You may have taken another strengths assessment from another organization. But if you just quickly look at these 23 strengths. Now these are 23 strengths that were developed from the ground up by two pediatric neuropsychologists out of the state of California. And this is specifically designed for students. So wonderful news, you get this for free. You can go and you can give your students this survey and you can find out their top five strengths as soon as you log in and make an account in Thrively. But what are your top five strengths? Quickly look and see what is maybe one of your top strengths. And I'll just ask you to throw that in the chat really quickly. What is one of your top strengths? And more importantly, what is that top strength that you wanna lead with as you start off the school year? So some of you might be thinking flexibility. I've noticed that's been on the rise lately for a lot of people. Or maybe we want our leadership qualities to shine. Uh, patience, absolutely, athleticism. Maybe balance, worldly, compassion. You all have compassion already, you're educators, right? But you're gonna lead with that one. Resilience, excellent. And as we ground ourselves in that strength that you're trying to get to, okay? We've got empathy, appreciation, flexibility, fun loving. I think fun loving is a great one to start the school year off. Let those students know that you are here to also help them um, and have them go through this activity really quickly. As you learn the vocabulary for each one of these, ground yourself in a, in a goal. And isn't uh, school all about goal setting too? So I might think about, I'll grab one of them, leadership at the bottom here. It says, you are a visionary, inspire others. You can, um, you can present in front of others and capture their attention. So what are you going to do to use that quality, that strength of yours to continue to grow and develop as an educator or maybe as a parent or as a friend? So as we start with strengths, remember we're leading with what's great with us. We have a saying here and you'll see it on here. It says, what's strong with you, not what's wrong with you. So really enter this classroom space, letting everybody know in your space, including professional development, that we all have strengths that we bring to the table and that you would love to learn about what their strengths are too, because that really dives in beyond the surface. Um, so as we look at these strengths, I wanna um, put in the chat really quickly some resources. And these resources can be used to hang around the room. Um, we have strengths cards that we use. Uh oh, my chat just jumped away. There it is, okay. Um, these cards can be used, um, you can make copies of them and you can ensure that um, you laminate them and use them for different activities. Maybe you pick a strength every day that you're gonna focus on and highlight. Who thinks they have these strengths? How are we gonna use this strength? And remember the 23 strengths playlist inside of Thrively helps drive this learning a little bit more. So if you're taking notes right now, 23 strengths playlist, there's one for third through fifth graders, there's one for K to two, and there's also one for six through eight and nine through 12. And so looking at these grade bands, we want students to really try to identify with each of these vocabulary words and come to school ready to utilize their strengths. So I hope that you can use these assets and uh, the resources that I'm presenting here. We also have a resource here that I'll um, oops, I didn't jump to the next slide. Here we go. So this resource here is something that I use in the classroom. In fact, I did it in a PD yesterday that I was leading with staff. And again, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the chat so that you have access. This recording, um, if you're watching it as a recording or you're here live, all of these resources are on the deck that we're gonna be sharing with you. So imagine if you started your day off with introduce yourself, draw or take a picture if you're doing this um, on a digital, what are some of your students' passions? Or maybe it's a staff retreat. What are the new learnings that you've had over the course of the summer? And then who do you admire? 
And then of course, filling in once they've taken the strength assessment, what they're filling in with my strengths. Now I could see doing this a couple times a year too, definitely having um, them see if they've grown, have their passions changed, have they had any new learnings? Um, and again, how they've utilized these strengths. So this I've shared with you in the Google Drive, feel free to go ahead and adjust it and use it as you. But as you're thinking about yourself and your passions and new learnings, remember that these are things that drive you. I saw something recently about your purpose. If you're doing your purpose, if you're leading with your purpose, you're happier, you're more joyful. And again, as we enter into a new year, a lot of us have this newfound hope and excitement for the year. And we wanna keep building on that. So keep going back to things that you're passionate about, to the new learnings that you are proud of yourself for. And of course, the people that you admire and how they've overcome or that they've led in certain ways. And so how do your strengths show up every day that you're leading a classroom or a school or a district? So these are really great things to have conversations about. The other thing that I love to use uh, as a start of school experience is this user guide. Now this is just an example of one, but this user guide for Jaden really highlights again, what he wants to become. This is again, goal setting. I'm gonna throw this in the chat as well, because this is um, a presentation that you can have. He can go ahead and draw or put a picture of himself. He tells us what he wants to learn. And then the most important part, I love this one, is what I wish people knew about me. Start that school year off opening up for vulnerability. Brene Brown talks a lot about being vulnerable and, and setting that stage. So maybe you, you say to the students, I wish you knew about me and you model that best practice. But if you put it out there and you put your user guide right up in front of the students, that gets them comfortable. And again, we know this is about building relationships. And then we go ahead and put our, our strengths out. Now imagine you have this digitally or you have this up around your room. Maybe you have some... Um, some people who want to do more drawing and, and um, painting or something like that, put it on big poster paper, hang it around your building. Uh, what a great thing for parents to come in and see all of these wonderful user guides about the students and, um, and their, their children in front of them. Now, as we continue to dive into what Thrively has to offer, again, these um, resources that I'm providing to you, many of those were offline. And so Thrively really likes to build upon the offline and online opportunities. So when we think about relationships that are built on strength, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about the teachers to student relationship right now. After you've taken the 30 minute assessment on Thrively, now again, if you make yourself a, um, a login and you go ahead and you roster your students, they can take the strength assessment for free. You get this beautiful, um, picture of the student name and their strengths. I used to print this off and have it on a clipboard so that I could constantly highlight the strengths of the students. So if I'm walking around, I might say, Aaron, I love how you used your compassion to lead the group or Alejandra, you used your creative thinking to make sure that the group was really thinking outside the box. Um, you know, you're, you're touching and making sure that you're exposing and, and talking about the student strengths constantly so that they continue to know themselves through a strengths-based lens. When we focus on their strengths when they're learning, they're gonna build confidence. We're gonna remind them of those strengths too when they're challenged. So again, have this document pulled up so that you can see it and you can reflect back on it. Maybe even ask them, what strength would you like to use to try to persevere through a challenge? Oh, hey, I'm gonna use my drive to see if I can get through this. How are you gonna do that, Alejandro? Well, I'm gonna make sure that I continue to think about ways to to um, you know, keep thinking that I can succeed, right? As we set goals with students, that will help them utilize their strengths and put the strengths in front of them so that they feel like they can get through these challenges. But the other thing that's really great, and we have this um, ability to do this in Thrively, is being able to group or pair students by their strengths. So as you see here, we've got a list of five students and we have their strengths, interests, and aspirations. So whether you wanna do heterogeneous or homogeneous groupings, you can group them by their strengths. But the other way we can do this too is you can see similar students here. So in Callie's, um, if you're looking at just hers, you can click on this little three dots. It's like a triangle and you can see some similar students. So it says Callie, Tamara and Jessica also have five common strengths. So maybe you wanna group them together and have them focus on those common strengths. But as they begin to get to know each other by what's strong with them, they may find some similarities they didn't know existed. Maybe Callie and Tamara weren't friends last year, but all of a sudden they're like, wow, you and I both have 
you know, five top strengths together and they start to realize that they have more in common than what they originally thought. Also encourage them to find someone who has a strength that they need in that moment. I know that many times I lean into people who have analytical skills or focus skills when I just need that extra push to be able to get through something. So as we start to think about this collaborative space that we're building in our classroom, we can use these strengths to really highlight how we get through teamwork and team dynamics. This other piece that I wanna talk about is really about teaching trust and belonging. Now, I've added this video here. It's a little bit longer than what we have time for today with our um, entire presentation, but I wanted to make sure that it was here because what I'm laying out for you, I am stealing. Don't we do that as educators? Um, and I really loved this because Brene Brown talks about the anatomy of trust. And what does that look like? How do we break that down into manageable pieces? So here I've highlighted a couple of things that she talks about in the video. Number one, it talks about boundaries. How do I set boundaries in my classroom? Sometimes we call these norms um, and we, we engage them in feeling like these boundaries are theirs, right? So I know we've been putting posters up around and we've been you know, making sure that our classroom looks amazing, but maybe we create a blank space for them to say, what are some boundaries that we wanna create in our classroom? And I'll go back to a, you know, a conversation of what Brene Brown talks about is her, her daughter was engaged in this conversation with some friends and they broke trust with her. And we can you know, bring up these, um, these situations and Thrively has a lot of lessons that bring up these situations that say, how would you handle that? How would you want that to be handled? And that helps generate those conversations around boundaries. She also talks that the environment has to be reliable. Okay, so that it's consistent and reliable. So as you think about your systems and your classroom management, when you have consistent and reliable environment situations, it creates a safe space for students. So what does that look like? Maybe ask them what that looks like and how they'd like that to be. Um, accountability. If I make a mistake, take accountability, model it. If you see a student taking about accountability or maybe you model it and you practice it, and you, you role play these things because this is not a natural thing to say, hey, you know what, I screwed up. I need, you know, and how we take accountability. So maybe you role play it through literature or maybe you, you build your own kind of role playing things that they can practice. Because when we own our mistakes, we, we have kindness and we lead with, um, without fear of ramifications. She also talks about a vault, right? What I share with you, I hold in confidence. As educators, we know that to be true. In Thrively, we're able to see journal reflections and give feedback, and we never want to make sure that the students, you know, think we're talking about them. So obviously that's off the table, but it's also peer to peer. We hear people talking, you know, about other, um, about students talking about other students all the time. And so how do we insert ourselves into that space to say, hey, would that feel good to you? Um, integrity, right? How to have courage over comfort. There's a lot of information on Thrively to help us understand how we can build this integritous classroom environment. And then of course, the non-judgment piece. When we struggle without judgment, when we have those opportunities where students are feeling you know, overwhelmed and remember behaviors are just ways of communicating. So when a student's struggling, they might be, you know, act out. How do we help ground them so they can really get back to uh, a more controlled space? Um, Kathleen Beachboard talks a lot about how we, um, what do you see? What do you, what do you smell? What do you taste? Um, you know, all of those five senses that we use helps ground our students into a space where they're not struggling. Um, and then of course, generosity. How do we lead with generosity? How do we create the space where people are thanking others? And again, this is about peer to peer. Thank you to so-and-so. Have that generous space at the end of class to be able to have those conversations. Now, you'll see a lesson here called Tell the Truth. And you can search for lessons in Thrively, and I'll show you how to do that in a second, but this one's about honesty. So again, if a situation happens in your classroom, you can be responsive in Thrively, being able to say, hey, I've got a lesson for that. Let's talk about that tomorrow. And it doesn't have to be a pre-planned scope and sequence. It can also be something where you react kind of right there in the situation. We also have created this, oops, this um, opportunity here where students can have voice. Okay, we've heard so much about this over the last decade. And I think this is a piece that I love the most being able to do and see and reflect is that students are going in and they're doing these journals. Now notice they can write in the journals. Many of you guys have used this before, but 
encourage them to do the audio and the video. Encourage them to sit with a friend and turn and talk to their friend and have a conversation about the journal prompt. Again, if you've got a verbal person, as we talked about in the beginning, maybe you make sure that they're in a little group and they're talking about the prompt. Tell why your name is perfect for you. I had three boys here in Douglas County talk about why their name was perfect for them and why they were named that. And then they uploaded it. So it was a beautiful moment for them to share with each other, but also capture that so that parents and educators can see that. And then you as educators, counselors, administrators can go in and make sure you comment on those journals. Um, okay, I see a question in here and I wanna answer it right now because it kind of, um, Holly's saying, we are not allowed to create accounts for under 14 year old students without a data governance agreement with vendors. Yep. And so there is um, not a paper version of the strength assessment, but we do have that agreement. So I'll give you a way to reach out to us so that we have uh, that information we do follow on, you know, we make sure that we follow all of the um, laws that you need to follow. So certainly reach out to us and let us know what you need. Um, we can talk a little bit about that. Um, but here you see an example of where students add highlights uh, to a goal too. So this is an empathy goal right here. And a student has added a picture where they've helped another student. They're showing evidence that their, their voice is being heard. Hey, I'm not even in school and I'm trying to upload um, evidence of me doing an action or doing a learning that I designed and I wanted to do. And then you as teachers, again, as we talk about giving that trust and that belonging space, we're giving feedback to encourage them, to support them. Because a lot of times we don't know if they're getting that at home. We don't know if um, you know they're always getting the full support that they need. So that's where it's really great that we can have those conversations. And Thrively, um, I've heard it time and time again, one fifth grader said, it's like I have a friend that I can talk to when I do these journal reflections and I have the ability to do this. So you create that space for them. Now, student voice also extends out to lessons. So here's an example of a lesson. And again, you can search for this under enrichment. So you go all the way over to the far left-hand side of your dashboard and you can go to enrichment and then lessons. And you can go to the search button and find lessons. You can type in, if you're interested in this one, what I wish my teacher knew. And you'll notice in this lesson, we have a way for it to, to um, speak. So click that little speaker button. There's videos, there's, there's things to read, there's articles that take you to um, a web page, but there's always a prompt to get students to think about, what did I just learn? And we know the power of self-reflection. So in this case, we're asking that question of what do you wish I, what, what do you wish I knew? And it creates a safe space for students to share with their teachers. And again, you ensure, um, you know, tell them out loud, I'm the only one who sees this, or maybe there's a counselor or administrator. Now there is the ability to add parents to the Thrively dashboard as well. So you wanna make sure that if you're utilizing that resource that you're transparent with that. But we're also in this space of, hey, listen, learning gets stressful. Sometimes just social relations get stressful. And so we want to also talk about, as we build this positive, you know, learning identity, that everyone goes through stress. And so you could either do it from a proactive standpoint where we put together stress management lessons that can support in advance giving them strategies. In this case, it was a strategy where a student takes a time out. And in this question, it says, you know, why do we experience stress? And why, what is it important? How are some ways that we can manage and reduce our stress? So things like exercise and eating right taking deep breaths, um, asking to go for a walk if we're stressed in school or if something happened on the playground, asking to you know, talk to a, a trusted adult. So putting those out in front gives students that idea of, okay, I know I can get support right away. Um, but also know that inside of Thrively, you can assign lessons to just one student. As a reactive standpoint, you might notice that a student is going through stress or they might mention something in a journal reflection that they're having some stress at home. Go ahead and assign a lesson to just that student. And um, again, this isn't like all the, the tools in Thrively, but we are here at Thrively to help walk you through how to use the dashboard. I'll tell you right here in this lesson, if you go up to the top next to this little speaker button, there's a gear feature. You click on that gear feature and it teaches and it guides you through how to assign to students. 
But this is really wonderful because again, if you hear something that has happened or maybe a counselor or somebody comes to you and says, hey, we need to give some support to the student, you can assign lessons that way. I love some of these mindfulness and gratitude ones. This is for um, a younger age group, but these lessons can help with student focus. So maybe you do this as a morning routine or as they come in from recess. Okay, kids, we're gonna just kind of get into our mindfulness. We're gonna take some lesson, you know, some deep breaths. We might do some exercise or some calming things. And so reminder, you can do these lessons as whole group as well. Show the video on the board, have a journal next to them for writing and just put the prompt up on the board and have them write. Or again, turn and talk to a partner, share out, make sure they share different things that they're wanting to share. So all of these are built for you, ready to go so that you are ready for your morning routines or your breaks or your responses to things that you're seeing that will happen. Now, all of these things live inside of Thrively, but here's um, something that I think is really cool. This teacher of the year, she comes on, and again, this is a resource for you to go in and watch. This is about a five minute video, and this is the National Teacher of the Year from 2023. She talks a little bit about infusing joy in the classroom and some of her strategies she uses. But in Thrively, and by the way, all of these links, and I will share the document with you. Um, let me pull it out for a second so you can access it. Um, this link right here will get you the document, the shout out document. Now we have lots and lots of these um, these offline activities for you. So let me put this in the chat so you can pull it up for those of you that are on the computer using it. So this shout out activity is a strengths activator. Again, we're talking about how strengths can really develop that positive learning identity. So as we start to focus on appreciation, compassion, leadership, verbal, and social in this particular activator, we're building a culture of appreciation. We're highlighting that strength and we're caught being strong. So as you look at this lesson, it's really um, asking those students who have these strengths to be highlighted and celebrated, but also to practice. Because remember, all of us have the 23 strengths. It's just that five of them might show up a little bit more often and that we utilize them more often. So if you need more offline activities, again, we are here for you at Thrively to continue to bring you these offline activities to infuse joy in the classroom. Um, and then last, Relevance for the future, okay? As we set up our ideas of why this matters, why are we learning about stress management? Why are we learning about math? Why are we learning about all the things we're learning about? Remember that it, it, when it's tied to a goal and then on the back end, we celebrate that goal being achieved by giving them a badge. That really grounds it for students. That helps them make the plans to get to the goal reflect on the actions, even if, if it's as simple as you see some of these here, I share my ideas. Hey, show us when you've done that. Remember those highlights, we upload a chance when a student shared an idea that they had and how it made them feel. And again, those badges celebrate that success. And inside the digital portfolio, you'll see goals and badges for every student that showcases the learning journey. So imagine if you've been doing this for a couple of years, kids can walk in and you can see them you know, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, they're now showcasing all the badges that they've earned and all of the learning that they're proud of. And again, this is about autonomy and building that positive learning identity. We know that as we get towards high school, so a lot of you in here may be uh, middle school and high school focused, we're starting to give exposure to career exploration. Maybe you're jumping into project-based learning and enrichment. So know that Thrively also has under the enrichment tab, which is where we've been spending most of the time today, you can go under pathways and you can see all of these different, there's hundreds and hundreds of career pathways that you can explore with students. So they can start to see why learning what I'm learning matters because I'm going to become something someday. I'm going to have a career someday. And of course, they may not know my own 11 year old wants to become a professional hockey player. I want him to have a backup plan. So what are some of those careers that would be really good for you with your strengths? If your athleticism and verbal and some of these other things, what might be a really good career pathway for you? The earlier we start these conversations, the more relevance we build for students. So in conclusion, as we start to really think about how we're leading with strengths, it all begins with students knowing their strengths, celebrating their unique identity, having a safe space to explore their passions and interests. It starts with taking the strength assessment, which pops right up. You don't have to assign it. Students get a login and they pop right up. 
And of course, lead with compassion. You all are compassionate educators. Look at the write-up that the students get after they take this strengths profile. You are focused with an analytical mind and nice flexibility. Three paragraphs of how amazing the student is. Let's celebrate these students every week, every year. We can print strength certificates. We can give them out at parent-teacher conferences. Imagine when we lead with this, the conversations that'll be had. And of course, we wanted to solve these problems. These were the, three, the six things we led with at the beginning of this webinar. We are building relationships based on strengths, developing trust, giving students a voice. Of course, trying to think, you know, in, in advance how we're gonna manage stress and overcome challenges, but create joyful lessons and really bring that relevance piece in as they start to get through. We are here for you at Thrively, support at thrively.com. If you need anything at all, we're happy to give you support. Um, I'd also like to put my email address in here as well. If you guys have ideas of things that you're looking for, or maybe you need some more offline activities, please reach out to us. We are here as implementation specialists, making sure that we guide the learning journey for you so that you don't have to do the really heavy lifting. And um, again, it's as easy as logging into thrively.com, join as an educator, and then follow the Google link. It'll kind of walk you through the steps. Um, and then take the strength assessment for yourself. Know your own strengths so that you can lead with that and do a user guide at the beginning of the year. So really excited to hear how you all are leading with strengths. I, I welcome any questions. Um, I'm gonna stay on for a few minutes and make sure that you have the resources you need. Um, but thank you so much for being here. I know this 30 minutes always goes by so quickly, but we value your time. I know it's late for some of you on the East Coast. So the resources are here. I am gonna go ahead and drop in the um, presentation for you all who have joined us. So thankful for you being here live and um, please ask questions. I'm happy to, um, whether it's allowed or, or otherwise, there is the presentation that we just went through. And again, these a lot of these are clickable links that will take you to the different lessons. Um, and if there's something that's not working from a Thrively perspective, there is a green button on the bottom right-hand corner of your Thrively dashboard. Click that, it's a live person that will help you, or again, reach out to me at Jeanette at Thrively.com. So without further ado, if anybody has any questions, happy to jump on. Thank you for being here. All of you guys, um, super excited for a new school year. I've been getting out live and working with um, lots of you out there. We'd be happy to come to your school and lead anything live. Reach out to us and we can lead some PD or help you with your classroom strategies. Um, have an amazing, amazing year. And just know here at Thrively, we're your partners here in this learning journey, especially leading with strengths. So thank you so much. Have a great year.